All right. Shalom Ras Tesarine. Ras Yedinos Tesarine. This is Wendem Yado reporting for Line of Jew Society of His Imperial Majesty in the Americas, the Caribbean, and throughout the world, and broadcasting on Ethiopian World Net on the YouTube channel. And you can also uh, fellowship with Fire and I and join us on the Facebook, Ethiopian World Net on the Facebook. We want to continue this particular subject matter. And we had uh, began off in this series right here on the two events in one view, right, of the Father and the Son, of the Father and the Son, all right? The Father and the Son is one, right? The Father and the Son is one. So we see there are two events. There is the first advent that we see of the Son of Yeshua HaMoshiach, our Black Lord and Savior. And then there is the second advent of the Father. So the Son came to bear witness of the Father. And the Father, the only true witness of the Son, came to bear witness of the Son in the person of Kedamawi Haila Selassie. But in order to really fully understand this, you need to understand what the living faith says. And you need to understand and comprehend the Bible. But most importantly, I think, is what Yeshua HaMoshiach said when he said to the Samaritan woman, he said that you worship that which you know not. Right? You don't know what you worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews or of Judah. And we say, Behold, Moa Anbesa the Im Negeda Yehuda, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, fulfilling that second advent in the person of the King of Kings of Kedamawi Haila Shalase upon the throne of great King David. Because the throne of great King David, the word says, there would never lack a man to sit upon that throne. And the throne of great King David, biblically speaking, is also the throne of Yahweh, the throne of Jehovah God upon earth. Now, we touched on chapter 61, beginning over verse 1 and 2 for comparison to um, uh, Luke, Luke's gospel, yeah, Lucas 1 Gale, chapter 4, verses uh, 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 16. And what a feat, and forward from verse verse 16, because this is where Christ spoke this prophetic word, but he stops at the comma halfway in the verse, verse 2, all right? And some have interpreted, well, that is because the first part of the prophecy of that particular chapter would be fulfilled and was fulfilled in Yeshua HaMoshiach. And then the latter part of that prophecy was fulfilled in the person of the Father. But of course, when you see the Father, you see the Son, and when you see the Son, you see the Father. So we have to understand what we know as the person, right, the, the person of the persons of the Trinity. Now, as we mentioned before, if you approach it from a, an Angles or an English perspective, you understand, you are going to miss the mark. You have to go to the original languages in order to get the original context. There's some folks who say, wrongly, you understand, that um, His Majesty said that Ethiopia has one of the oldest versions of the Bible, but no matter how old the version may be in whatever language it may have been written, the word is one and the same. And they feel that, well, it doesn't matter what translation is used, that all translations are the same. That would be foolish, because in the very same speech, His Majesty explains who, what the word is and who the word is. The Word is our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. He is that Word of God, the Logos, made manifest. The Logos, the, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld His glory as of the only begotten, the only begotten of the Father, because it was the mensis caduce, the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm speaking a lot of what they call orthodox doctrine, the orthodox teaching. You understand? And most of us in the West have been exposed to Mystery Babylon and Mystery Babylon's daughters, the daughters of Mystery Babylon, all these different denominations. And many come into Rastafari, and of course they bring in what they already have amongst them. But this is why the word says repent and be born again, and also to study and show yourself approved. Because now if you build your house on, on that foundation, you're building it on sand until you are born again and recognize, well, what is the teaching of his imperial majesty? It is an error 
to assume that from our Western Gentile Christian perspective, that the way that we may um, interpret who his majesty is from a, a Protestant denomination or from a, a, a Pentecostal um, denomination or from an uh, Evangelical denomination or from a Southern Baptist denomination or from a Unitarian denomination or from a Jehovah Witness denomination or from a Seventh-day Adventist denomination. Now, this is not to say that in those various denominations, there might not be certain points that are true. And from our own study, we found that there's many things that are true, but essentially what is faulty is their theology. You understand? Those who focus more on what the Bible say are more in, you understand, are more in the, 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 the square or the foundation. But, of course, other things creep in. But what we have to recognize is that when His Majesty is speaking this word, He's speaking this from a... A, a a ritua hymeno from the correct faith, you understand, the correct living faith. So we have to learn these things. And this is why when Hala Selassie sent the Orthodox Church, you understand, under Abuna Yisahak. And let us um, uh, show this particular book right here. Right, see if we can show this book again. Right, this particular book is so very excellent right here. You understand this particular book, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, even its name, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. You might see Ethiopian Orthodox Church. You might see Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. You understand? Basically, they're using a loan word. But here, this, this brother right here, the late Abuna um, Yisahak, you understand? He presented in doctrine, he presented the essential truth. You understand? Now, if you would study this, this is the English translation, it, it, it would be a good first step, you understand, a first step, even explaining the, the Trinity, you understand, if you approach it from, from a Hinduism or Buddhism or some Eastern teaching or worse yet, in some sort of New Age thing, you're going to become awfully confused, you understand, um, of what His Majesty is talking about. In fact, when His Majesty said concerning the question of Christ, I'm a man, I'm mortal, I will be preceded or succeeded by the oncoming generation. I've heard of this idea. I've spoken to certain Rastafarians, and they should never make the mistake of pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. A lot of folks say, well, there he said I'm not Christ. I mean, he didn't say Christ or Jesus or anything there. You understand? Instead, what they're doing is believing the narrator instead of listening carefully and studying, well, what does this matter mean? That we as Rastafari should not make a mistake in pretending or assuming that man is emanated from a deity. Well, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? How did man come about? You know what I'm saying? Man was created in the image, right? And after the likeness of God. Right? In the image and after the likeness of God. So what is the image and what is the likeness of God? You understand? And here's what we touch on the Trinity. And and this is important perhaps for us to deal with this excuse me, deal with this particular matter right here. Um, although we were going to speak a little more on the Gentile, right? We think we're gonna to touch on Selassie. We have to touch on Selassie because this is a cornerstone because many people say Selassie I and they think that when they say Selassie I that they're referring to the Imperial Majesty. If they are referring to the Imperial Majesty, they are referring to the Imperial Majesty disrespectfully. Because Selassie is not the same as, as Amari Haile Selassie or as Haile Selassie the first or as even Haile Selassie I. So let's, let's clear this. We're going to follow the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because there's a couple of um, related subject matters that we've been reasoning with certain brothers and sisters and um, also um, answering here and there that we want to present more fuller and more firm up on this particular channel and for the broadest broadcast, you know what I'm saying, of the word. And so the sower went forth to sow, right? And the seed sometimes falls in different sort of ground. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it falls in different, in different sort of ground, right? Okay, leave that there. All right, so let's deal with this right here. Now, we say the two events in one view. You might have to keep that there, actually. You understand? Or maybe we'll just clear that as well. Let's put the flag up here and let's uh let's take this off. Alright. Um, so here. 
hopefully some of it's still on here, but we'll clear this fully later on. We're just going to use this so some notes we can put up here. So, Selassie I. Let us deal with Selassie I. First of all, you, you have to know well, what the Selassie, Selassie, right? Selassie I, right? Selassie I in man, right? Selassie I in man. Now, when you say Selassie I, what you really are saying, if you know the truth, you're saying the Trinity in me. See, folks, what they do is project on his majesty because of ignorance and error, right? Some even with envy, but we're going to speak of our brothers and sisters who probably are approaching this in ignorance and error. Even I and I was approaching it in ignorance and error until we studied and learned the truth. You know what I'm saying? And we had to go to the, to the root. You know what I'm saying? To the root. These documents right here, you know what I'm saying? Are some of them. You know, some of the root teachings. That's what we mentioned right here. We mentioned the Ethiopian, um, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. And there's a particular chapter here. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't bookmark it. But let's see if we can um, touch on this. Where the Abuna, um, Abuna Yisahak, where he speaks about the doctrine, the teaching. You understand the teaching. Because you would think, well, wasn't there only one Christ? You understand? Yeah. And the Bible speaks about one Christ, so forth and so on. Why are there all these different denominations? Because many people get the wrong interpretation. You understand? And then we have these ones who all say they are Christians fighting and killing each other. You understand? That's not what Christ has taught, but that's what the, the enemy, you understand, who has sold weeds among the wheat, you understand? Have, have done. This is why Christ gave that particular parable as well. So we have what we know as the Amistu Imade Mishtir, or the five pillars of mystery. And here on page uh, 123, 123, it says the pillars of mystery. Now what is a mystery? A mystery is a secret, right? Now notice what Christ says. Let's turn our Bibles to the, to the parable. You know, we have some folks who want to debate the parables, but they don't even know the doctrine. So if you don't know the doctrine, how are you going to properly interpret the parables? You know what I'm saying? Listen to what Christ says right here. All right, listen to what Christ says right here. The mysteries of the kingdom, um, chapter 13. The mystery of the kingdom, he begins with the first mystery, the mystery of the sower. Right? And it says, the same day went Yeshua out of the house and sat by the sea. Verse 2, and great multitudes were gathered together to him. So that he went into a ship and sat, and on the whole and, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Verse three. And he spake many things to them in parables. Now we explain that parables are proverbs. The same word for parable is the same word for proverb. And, and the word is so similar in the Hebrew is is is, is mishale, mishale. In Bamarinya, it's misale. So we see the difference is one is a sh and one is a sa sound. But it's essentially one and the same because they're both Afro Shemitic languages. All right? And it says, saying, Behold, look and see. A soul went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Verse 5 Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness. They had no deepness, no depth of earth. Verse 6. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. Therefore, they, they, they withered away. Therefore, they withered away or, or they withered away. So they, because they had no root when the sun was up, when the light had come up. You understand, like we're going to a time of darkness, but we're coming into a new age. You understand, an Adis Zemin in this 2012. So when the sun now comes up, if they or if you don't have no roots, you're going to wither away. You know, verse, verse 7 said, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Verse 8, But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. 
some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Verse 9. Who hath ears to hear to Shema, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Right here. Hear this intelligently, spiritually. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Who have a, a spiritual ear to Shema, let him, um, may he Shema. You understand? Know if you hear this, then hear this intelligently, then hear this spiritually, right? Now, verse 10 says that, and the disciples, the Dek al right, they came and said to him, Why speakest thou to them in parables? Why are you speaking in these mythological archetypes? Why are you speaking in, in these mythological, the, uh, the soul went forth to soul? You can see this even in ancient Egypt, you understand, when the soul is in the, in, in the Elysian field. Or the or the what they call the head tap, you understand? And he's sowing, you know, seed and so forth and so on in the papyrus of Ani. You can see that that's a part of the mystery that Moses was learned in. But they're asking Yeshua, why is he speaking to them in, in parables, right? In, in proverbs, in parabolical, uh, uh, mythological archetypes. Verse 11, Yeshua answers. He says. He answered and said to them, because, the reason why I'm speaking in parables, the reason why I'm using mythology, right, is because it is given to you, his Bekam as Amor, remember, there's a whole multitude of people. It's like there's a multitude of people who have come to Rastafari, to his majesty, but they are the true disciples who want to be disciplined and learn of him. So there's a distinction between the big crowd and his disciples. Overstand? In other words, the Rastas and the Rastafari, right? Who know that Rastafari does not mean head creator, you understand? But the head to be feared or self respect. It says, because it is given to you to know the mysteries, the secrets, the mystir. And the word mystery, actually, if you were to go and search it out, in, even in the, the Blue Letter Bible or use the um, Strong's Concordance. Right, and you go into that word um, um, mystir or mystir or mystery, and you go keep going to the root of the word. The root of the word is 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 mythos. It's mythos. Mythos means stories, right? It means a type of a story, a, a learning story, or, but the story that that has a a secret meaning or an initiative meaning that you have to grow to a certain understanding, so you recognize, like you've heard a story over and over, you know, like when parents would say certain things in a, in a kind of a rhyme or whatever, and you heard it and you roll your eyes and everything, and then when you get older, you begin to recognize one day, maybe when you have children, you're like, oh, that's why they used to say, that mystery now is, is, is disclosed to you. So it says right here that it was given to them who the disciples to know. Not to guess, not to assume, not to pretend, not to interpolate, you understand? But to properly interpret so they can know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. So who's the them? These, these multitudes, you understand? These like fly-by-night folks, you understand? Who are just coming maybe for a little herb or like the locks or, you know, like the red, gold, and green or listen to the reggae. Yes, I. You understand? But he says right here, it is what? It is not given to them. To them it is not given. What's not given? The, the, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, the secrets. You know, it's like if you have a secret, who do you give this secret to? Do you tell everybody? Do you put it on your face? Well, silly people are doing a lot of silly stuff, really. You know, but, but, but in, 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 in a more intelligible and reasonable sense, a logical sense, if we will. You understand? Usually tell them, if you do tell anybody a secret, you must at least feel that you can trust them. You understand? You must trust that person. And, you're with, and that's who you would tell your secrets to. You understand? You wouldn't tell your secrets, generally speaking, to those who you know are your enemies. You understand? Or those who you know are like walk-ins. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the multitude, they came because they heard, oh, that's Yeshua. Yeah, he's a prophet and everything. Let's listen to him. You know, but the disciples went further than that. They were in the discipline. 
You understand? They were they were studying to show and to prove these things. All right, to do these things. Verse twelve says, "For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance." So if you got spiritual root, you're gonna get more spiritual, right? But whosoever hath not, whosoever is empty, right? From him shall be taken away even that he has. Even the little bit that he has is going to be taken away from him. Wow. That's our merciful Lord. Some people think, oh, that sounds kind of harsh and cruel. You understand? But like we say, it's not for the kingdom in that sense to, to give you money. It's not for the government to give you money. People got spoiled by that. You understand? The government is there to maintain the law. You understand? To, to, to punish the guilty. You understand? And even to reward, you understand, the righteous. But it's not there to, it's not, it's not there to be just charitable in the sense of giving you what you should actually earn. You understand? Like I said, if you have faith without works, it's dead. So if you have faith in something, you should work it out. You see, most people say, I have faith in this, but they never work it out. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's more like they, 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 they don't know. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. Well, I believe. Belief is that first level. In other words, belief is like trust and confidence. Like if you have trust and confidence that a teacher knows such and such a thing, you understand? Then that helps you to know it. If that teacher truly knows it, you're going to know it, you're going to be able to do it, and you're going to be able to show fruit of it. All right? So that's what it means right there about ones who have will be given more. Those who don't have, even whatever little bit he got, going to be taken away. Right? Verse 13, therefore, speak I to them in parables. Therefore, when the multitudes are gathering around, I'm going to give them mythological types. Mm-hmm. In a sense, I'm going to explain these mysteries like children's stories. You see what I'm saying? Notice that it was not the multitude that came forward to him and said, hey, you're speaking a parable to us. I mean, I mean, what's that really about? No, they heard the parable and they went off, you know what I'm saying, probably making up their own things. It's like what happens even in Rastafari. Instead of going to the master, you know what I'm saying, going to Yeshua, going to the word and the teaching of his majesty, they're going to just make up what they believe, you know what I'm saying, it means. Mm -hmm. Same is true with the whole Selassie matter. You know, in the Selassie matter. You know, but let's, we're going to touch on that, y'all willing. Let's just go forward right here. So it's because they seeing. They see his majesty. They seeing. They see not. They really don't recognize the, 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 the fullness. You know what I'm And they get caught up in foolishness, right? Hearing, they hear. You know what I'm saying? They hear the word. You see, they've heard his majesty say that, for my part, I glory in the Bible. They hear his majesty speak of Yeshua HaMashiach. They hear these things, you understand? But, they, but, 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 but it says, neither do they understand. So they hear it, but they really don't get the overstanding, right? Verse, 11, verse 14 says, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. So we've been on the prophecy of Yeshayahu, even in the previous portion, Isaiah the prophet, which saith, by, seeing, by hearing... By hearing, ye shall hear. In other words, they're going to hear. They've heard about the king of kings. They've heard about Ethiopia. They've heard about the queen of Sheba. They've heard about these things. And shall not, right, and shall not understand, not really comprehend. They hear about it, but they really don't understand it. And seeing, they see the pictures. They see the art and facts, right? Seeing, ye shall see. They see these things and shall not perceive, not perceive what the deeper, more relevant meaning on their life, you understand, know their life in this world and their life to come is really all about. Verse 15, for this people's heart, the heart is their consciousness, right? This magnetic area right here is their consciousness, right? Their heart, right? You know, when somebody feels something, they don't put their hand on their head, they put their hand on their heart. Oh, my goodness. Right? You know what I'm saying? Right there, the heart chakra, the righteousness chakra. For this people's heart, Right, that consciousness, in other words, is wax gross. You understand? It's wax gross. And the ears are dull of hearing. The ears are dull of hearing. That same phrase, dull of hearing, is when in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews want to talk about Melchizedek. Edek. Like many people have asked I now about Melchizedek, Edek, but they don't know the basic foundation. So you recognize, well, since your ears are dull of Torah, I can't really expound to you. Melchizedek until you get the foundation. 
the groundation, right? So their ears are dull of hearing. Oh, come on, you talking about the oh the Old Testament is on the Bible. Oh man, you know they, 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 their ears are dull of hearing. But some foolishness they'll get all into it and repeat it and believe it. Anyway, and their eyes they have closed. Their spiritual eyes they can't really see. They only can see five psychically, physically. All right? So that spirituality is getting dimmer and dimmer and glimmer and dimmer. It says, less, least, at any time. So that so overstanding can happen at any time, right? At any time, they should see with their eyes. At any time, you, we can say, oh, see with their eyes, right? And hear with their ears, their spiritual ears. See, the Kippur Negev says that man has, man has like ten, um, he has ten uh, faculties in him, right? And, and, and five are wise, five are foolish. These are these five senses. We have our five physical senses. But how many of us have accessed those five spiritual senses which correspond to these five physical senses? All right? And if their eyes open, if your eyes open and your ears hear, right, you should what? Overstand where? With your heart, with your consciousness, with your consciousness. Mind. That's what it means to truly be conscious. You say, oh, that one is conscious because they wear red, gold, and green. They basically are doing what the next person is doing, but they haven't really seen it for themselves. You understand? You, you know, it's, it's bad if the soul depends on the body. Woe to that soul. But it's a double whammy, a double woe if your soul, your feeling, your thought, your will depends on somebody else's feeling and thought and will because you don't know the truth for yourself. Right? So they should understand with their heart, the consciousness, the heart, right? And should be converted. That means they recognize I was doing it the wrong way. I was approaching this from what I thought it was, but this is what his majesty say it is. And now that I've begun to do, I begin to see it. I begin to hear it. I begin to understand it and comprehend it. And I should heal them. You see, that real healing of Yeshua HaMoshiach can only happen, you understand, at that particular point. You know, if one is seeing and not comprehending and hearing and not hearing and their heart is not overstanding their consciousness, they cannot really be healed. This is why you see all these kind of like religious and Christian folks always dealing with the doctor and the pharmaceuticals, which is sorcery. You know, not, that, not that all type of herbs and things are bad, but we understand what big pharma is all about. You understand what's really behind it is sick, sick, sick. Keep people sick, sick, sick. You know, none of these things really heal anybody. It just keeps them, it kind of moderates their sickness. You know what I'm saying? It kind of milks them in another way. Verse 16 says, but blessed, but blessed, notice what, but blessed are your, your eyes, Christ is saying to those and these us, for they see, for you see, your eyes you see, and your ears for they hear. For verily I say to you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, even those things we, which we see in August of 2012. Egypt, Libya, and now Ethiopia. Wow. Look at Daniel chapter 11, verse 43. And, and tell me that that is not a sign of that prophetic fulfillment if you really know what has gone on this year. You know, some people are sleeping. You know, saying they only know about celebrity news and entertainment news and a lot of crazy, stupid stuff going on, like on 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 the internet or somewhere like that, right? Um, rap stars or something like that. Verse 17 says, "So verily, Amen, I say to you that many prophets, many of the Nabiya, many of the Sadiqan, have desired to see those things which ye see, which we see." and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, which we hear, and have not heard them. Then he says in verse 18, he says, Hear, Shema, Yisrael, ye therefore the parable, the Mishle, the Misale of the sower. Now he's going to explain this. I want you to pay attention. Please pay attention to this right here. He said this is like a groundation for the Selassiei and man. You're you over because otherwise you're gonna hear these things, but 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 not not understand them. You're gonna see these things, but not really perceive, not really recognize what the real meaning of this really is. The applicable, you understand? The application. These are the apps. You understand? Verse 18 says, "Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower." 
So he's saying that that these other ones, they heard him speak in parable, but they no, nobody came and said, "Hey, uh, um, ask the question." Like uh, I, I heard you talk that, but so what? How, what's that really mean? Me over them because they instead they thought like, "Oh, yeah, we understand. Yeah, that's talking to you talking about farming." Um, not really. Verse 19 says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth, really snatcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he, or this is one who received, or kabbalah that seed, the seed in this sense of the word, Right, the seed by the wayside, not on the way, but by the side of the way. So it sounds a little bit like 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 Christian, or it sounds a little bit like Bible, but it's really not this word. And most of us cannot really distinguish it until we know this word. Till we know this word, and then we hear somebody say something, we go and check it out for ourselves. We go pray on it. You saying we go reason for another brother or sister who also reads and studies this word and pray on the word. You know what I'm saying? What two or three are gathered together. You know what I'm saying? So right here is speaking about the kingdom. Now notice something very interesting about this. That the 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 seed in this revelation of Rastafari is the word concerning Hila Selassie, the word concerning the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. So this is a special a message to we as Rastafari. Let's understand that. So let's read it again. It says, when anyone, it doesn't matter whether you are Jew, black, or Gentile, white. You know, it does not matter. But when you hear the word of the kingdom, the word concerning Ja Rastafari, right? And you don't understand it. You don't understand it. You know what I'm You don't really understand, well, not what you get out of it, but what does the, the one who has sent that word mean in it? What does job mean in it? You understand? Know what, what does the yes, what does Christ mean by what he said? Not what you get out of it and what you want to, you know, make up your own thing, but what is he saying? So they don't understand that word. What does the word say? Then cometh the wicked one, right? And snatch it. It says catch it, but really snatch it. Right, snatch that, grab that. The the wicked one evict that out of evict that out of one heart, out of one's consciousness, that which was sown in his heart. And this explains why you see many ones who been trodden for a long time. You know what I'm saying? But you see them go further and further away from their first love. You know what I'm Become more and more worldly, and even later on begin to contradict what the things they first affirm. And even begin to talk slander against the one who they have called God and King of Kings. As though his majesty has failed, but they have failed to understand the word. You understand? Then the wicked one come and snatch that which was sown in his heart. So this is he. This is the type of one who receives seed, but instead of getting on the way, the truth and the life, which is Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, they're going to do their own thing. They're going to make up, say, well, this guy over here is Christ. And this, actually, this person over there, because they broke some idols, or they did some other kind of stuff. Come on now. I mean, this is, this is real talk here. Verse 20, it says, But he that receiveth seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word. So this one also hears that word. This isn't, this isn't talking about those who don't hear the word. It's talking about those who hear the word, right? So this is the one who hears the word, and a nun. And immediately, what the Yahweh knew, immediately, you understand, know the fitness, fast, quickly, they, re, they, they with joy, with joy they receive it. Yes, I, Rastafari, you know, yes, and king of, you know, and there's a, there's a lot of zeal, right? So like these have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, not according to the knowledge of the bane Ha Elohim Hayim, not according to the knowledge of the Son of the Living God. Instead, they're gonna start calling themselves gods, and then they're gonna become their own gods. All right. But anyway, this one receives it with joy. Immediately, they heard it. I got it. Yes, I. I know. Yes, that's exactly what I remember. This time, right? Yet, yet he had, yet has he not root in himself. Yet he don't have those roots. Which roots? The roots of the King of Kings. 
Which roots? The roots of the true faith. You understand? Which roots? He don't have these roots. He might drink some roots. You understand? And that's good for the body. Nothing wrong with that. You understand? But we're speaking spiritually here. We're speaking about the soul. We're speaking about life and eternal life here. Let's understand the importance. He doesn't have root in himself. It's like following the crowd. A lot of folks don't have root. You know, if, 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 if we teach something and show you the evidence, and somebody else just say something out of quickly, out of their own imagination, instead of ones going and checking out for themselves, they're going to follow along with what the crowd is saying. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have root in themselves. So, Yeshua, what happens is when they don't have root in themselves, but dureth for a while. They endure. I've been trying since 19 such and such. All right, that's cool. Right? You, you endure, you dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. Because of what? Because of the word. The word of what? The word of the kingdom. The word of the king of kings and his Christ. They look at a political situation. Oh, it don't look really good because, you know, over there in Africa, they really don't, and you know, in Ethiopia, such and such, and the politics, of the, right, tribulation or persecution. So they said, we shouldn't really talk about uh, uh, repatriation. Uh, we shouldn't really talk about reparation because it's not the right political climate right now. We have a black president. We shouldn't really say tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. What it says, by and by, S -S -S, little by little, he is what? He is off-ended. And that word offended also means stumble. Little by little, he stumbled. But what is he stumbling from? What is he offended in? In that word. So if you might say, oh, this is what Hala Selassie teach. Well, yes, you know, it's his majesty, but right now I and I might be practical. You understand? Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, by and by, he's offended. But little by little, he stumbles. You understand? And so you, you, you say, well, how uh, is Rastafari like it is today? When we look at yesterday, when it was making movements as a movement, when they said Nazi dread learned the Amharic, and it was making those movements, how is in this day and time where the movement is in a state of inertia or confusion? You understand? Don't we all have one Abba, one Father? You understand? If he really is your Abba or Father, then be his sons and daughters, in Getachinam and Hanatachin, Jesus Christos, in Jesus Christ, the Christ of His Majesty. Not the other Christ, not Bogiers, not that counterfeit that we heard or that, 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 that mixed fruit and everything, but get to the very root. Now, let's, let, that's two people, that's two types rather. Now, let's deal with the third type. Three strikes and you're out. Verse 22. He also. He also, so there's another type, the third type. He also, that receiveth seed, which is the word, the word of the kingdom, of the king of kings, right? Among the thorns, among the thorns, is he that heareth the word. So all of them are hearing the word. Get that. All of them have heard the word. All of these and those have heard the word. All right? See, when you understand this, you'll be able to really see much clearer, and when you hear this word, when you start to look at Rastafari, especially, you begin to see, oh, that's the reason, that's just like what it says in the word, you understand, that's why he gave us this word, because he knew there would be days like these, and that's why the enemy tried to say, oh, now you have to read the Bible, and rah, 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 because they don't want you to know the truth, you understand, because they don't want you to be free, you understand, he that, he also that receiveth seed, among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world. The care of this world. The care of the seclorum. You understand? Of, of the, the one with the God of this world. Is this the dollars, the God? The cares of this world. You understand? Well, I can't really do that because, you know, we need to get money. Well, John already has that sealed up for us. You understand? If we would make our obedience, you understand, known. You understand? In the spirit and in truth. But the care of this world, of the seclorum, and the deceitfulness of riches. You know, say, oh, we can't go to Africa, we can't, because we need money, we need such and such. It's like the Israelites, ain't it? Just like the Israelites, because these are the Israelites. Choke the word. It chokes the word. So instead of holding to the fullness of that original revelation and hearing of the word, they start to compromise 
the teaching of His Majesty to go along with their worldly seclorum interests, right? And He becometh what? Unfruitful. He becometh unfruitful. So He has He has uh, the, the the word, the seed, but there's no fruit. He He, he declares, well, yes, I now ratify His faith, but there's no fruitfulness of that. You check out one to one, it's like almost all worldly. You'd be like, what's going on here? Yovis, well, the word explains to us. The last example is the fruitful example. Yovis, verse 23, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground, the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. See, so before we think that we hear the word and we understand it, that's why it says to check yourself. Ye who think you stand, check yourself, lest you fall. You know what I'm saying? Check yourself. Because, you know, if you know you're right with something, but you say, all right, let me look at this and really be critical of it, like if I was to argue against it, just to make sure that what, I, what I'm holding is correct, one would be better off than saying, well, yeah, I'm right because it feels right to me. You got to watch those feelings are good, are good servants. Feelings make for poor masters. And that's some ancient, some ancient wisdom there. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understand that he overstandeth it, which also beareth fruit. So the one that overstands it bears fruit in the same direction as that word, or according to that word, right? According to that seed. And bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some a hundred percent, right? Some sixty, maybe sixty percent. Some 30%. You know, now, this is interesting right here, my brothers and sisters. Now, why did I begin off again? Because we've taught on this before. Why did I begin off again on this particular parable? You know what I'm saying? Because it's so important to understand and to be honest. What type are you? You understand? I basically see myself as going through all those types until I got to the good ground type. Now, what is the good ground type? Well, let's think about it in this in this, in this overt type, as a sower going forth to sow seed, right? If you, uh, if you want to plant a garden or, or, or a vineyard or something, what's the first thing you have to do, especially if the land has not been used or has been improperly used? Because remember, the ground is us. We are that ground. That seed is that word that goes into our tripartite being, our spirit, our soul, and our body. You understand? Know but you see, the good ground is that ground that's prepared. You understand? Know because it's all about the wayside, it's all about the stony places, right? And then talk about among the thorns, right? So that means that within us we have the wayside where we were not on, in the way and the truth. And most of us have been in the world. We've been born in this world of sin and error. So, so a lot of this has already happened even without our awareness. That's why it says repent. Have a change of mind. Check yourself at the gate, in other words. All right? So the ground has to be turned over. Like there's a, I have a neighbor who, um, um, a Jamaican lady, she, 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 made, she, she, she sows a really good garden. She hasn't done it in a, in a, in a year or so. She said she has some health problem, but I, and I pray for, you know, her recovery just to see her garden again. How, how much she sows that garden, but she, I was talking to her the other day, and she was like, you know, um, about some of my mom's and other, some land and everything, then she said, all you have to do is turn up the soil, all you have to do is turn up the soil, turn up the soil, right, you turn up the soil, now a lot of you probably know what this is, turning up the soil, it's almost like, when well, you turn up the soil, but as you turn up the soil, if you see a rock there, what you do, you don't leave the rock there, you see a rock there and say, oh, no, no I can't use that there. That's going to affect what I'm growing here. You take the rock out. If you turn up the soil and you find a, a fawn or something like that, anything that offends, anything that should not be in good ground, all you want to get is that rich soil, that, 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 that virgin. You know what I'm Trying to get the soil to its virgin sense or to its good sense. That means good for planting the seed. It's like us. So when we're coming out of the world, from doing all kind of stuff, it, we have to do more than just grow a dreadlock. You know what I'm saying? We have to do more than just bun the earth. You know what I'm saying? We have to do more than just so-called eat eye time. You know what I'm saying? All these things, wear red, gold, and green, all these things are outer things. Or say Selassie, all that's an outer thing. 
we have to go in to that so-called inward conception. You know, we as Rastafari have said, and man, the elders have passed this on to us, the latter generation, the over saying, or the present generation, and they have said to us that um, Rastafari is an in, uh, inward conception. An inward conception. Now, I mentioned this to a brother in just earlier today who was reasoning. And I, Brother Issa, I said, um, you're a father, right? I know he has youths and stuff. You're a father, right? You've had children. You didn't have the children. It was your wife who bore the children, in other words. But you conceived the seed, right, for these children, right? And so, therefore, when, when like, the woman say, well, oh, my, my period didn't come over. I'm, I'm, I must be pregnant. Or I did a test. I'm pregnant. Therefore, when that happens, you know what, what has happened. You understand? The baby hasn't been born yet. You understand? The baby hasn't gone through the, the trimesters, right? But there's a conception. There's like a spark. There's a conception. Now, now, what has to happen? Well, of course, with a woman who is giving birth or who has, has conceived and recognized she's pregnant, you know, there's a whole lot that really has to be done. You know what I'm saying? In the most ideal situation. But some of the basic thing is, well, she needs love. She needs care. She needs nurturement. You know what I'm saying? The proper foods. You understand? She should avoid looking at certain things. You know, ideally speaking, if she can be in like a garden, so to speak. You know what I mean? Where she's around nature. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the true and living God's creation. That would be much better. You know what I'm saying? But, but even so, in the cities or wherever, you know, saying, you know it, it's just the, even the food. She has to go and, and, and do checkups to make sure, you know, everything is working out right now with the technology. There's a sonograph and so forth and so on, which all helps to basically monitor that. She cannot do it really all by herself. She needs some midwives, you understand? Or at least her, 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 her personal or doctor or nurses and others. You know as well as her husband or, quote, baby father, you understand? Ideally speaking, you know to help basically bring that conceived seed to its full manifestation, which is a child, which is a birth. This is the very same thing with our being born again, the, the, the basic principles here. You understand? So now when we say as Rastafari, well, I and I, Rastafari is an inward conception. And ones will be telling you after 10, 20 years, that's the inward conception. Well, you know, a baby, once it's conceived, or a child, the embryo, once it's conceived, it takes about, what, nine? Solomon, King Solomon, in, in, the, in the wisdom of Solomon, said that he was born after, like, I think, 10 months, he says, for himself, right? But it takes about nine or so months if it, if it goes well, if it goes properly. Sometimes, though... You have um, what do you call it, uh, the early birth, and hopefully, you know, ones have gone through um, certain miscarriages. You understand? Um, in this world today, in, in a lot of the occultism that people don't really see, don't recognize what's behind it, there's the abortion thing too. So sometimes this is aborted. So a lot of things can happen between the time of conception. You know what I'm saying? And maybe never ever make it the first trimester, the second trimester, or, 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 or the full nine or so months. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I mention that because it, it connects with Selassie and man. You know what I'm saying? Selassie and man. There, there's a connection right here. I, I, I use this parable right here of the sower because... It's wonderfully beautiful and amazing that these these little words here, this this simple um, 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 parable, when it's fully, which is a mystery, right? Remember what Christ said: "This is the mystery. This is the secret, you understand, know of the kingdom of God." But as you begin to understand it, it makes so much sense. You understand? Know but it seems to most people to be crazy. You understand know what we're speaking about? Not just highlight logic, but this whole process, even spirituality. You know what I'm saying? But to we who receive it, you know what I'm saying? We have to bring this seed to full manifestation. So, in other words, can there be um, a spiritual abortion? You know what I'm saying? Or some actually, and, and, and I've seen these kind of things among some ones and ones. They were hot and fiery for Rastafari. 
You know what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden you check them later on and they're talking some real, excuse my language, some real skunks. You know what I'm saying? They're, I mean, you're like, where did that come from? You know, and somewhere along, it's like the parable of the sower. Either they were the one by the wayside, they heard the word, they didn't understand it, and the, the wicked one snatched it away. Either they were um, on the stony ground, so they were on stony ground, rocky ground, you understand, but they didn't have much depth. There was no depth of earth. There was no real deepness. Or the one among the thorns, you understand, the thorns, you understand. And the one among the thorns, it's interesting when you look at it because one among the thorns is talking about the cares of this world and, and the deceitfulness of riches, you understand, and a lot of the worldly things, you understand, and meeting the standards of maybe the worldly friends and family and other people, you understand, this is why Abraham, right, was called out. You, you know, Yah said to Abraham, El Shaddai said to Abraham, you know, come from your father's country, your father's house. I've called you out, and I've given you this great blessing. But notice something. Though he was told that he was a father of many nations to be this great father, Abraham, Abraham. Notice that it was, it was years when he got very old and his wife was very old, Sarah, that she finally conceived and bore forward Yitzhak, Isaac. You know what I'm saying? So it was not immediate. It was not overnight. You know what I'm saying? And we have to recognize this as well. So as, as it was like, yeah, ever since I cited Selassie, I, it's like you heard the word. You heard the word of the kingdom. But the question is, did you really understand it? And the real question is, do you understand it? But even the real question is, do you want it? to overstand it. Stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Shalom. Rastafari.